Matthew for the introduction. Yes, uh, like like Matthew said, I did not uh, start one app from uh, an incubator. I actually had no concept of, of being a business owner one day when I grew up. Uh, and yes, I did build this uh, business out of a homeless shelter, which is uh, talk about the definition of building a business out of need, right? So let me get a little bit into what one app is uh one app is a company uh previously known as no uh we we started to make some money and some of the marketing people thought no app fee was not the coolest name so we changed it to one app uh but yes um the way it works it, basically my history was i i went to school to be a fireman that was really my my passion in life i wanted to be a fireman um I, I got into it pretty much right out of high school. Uh, I got my EMT and my paramedic. Uh, I also got my fire science degree, my associates in fire science. I graduated fourth out of 72 in my class and I was the only African-American graduate. So um, I was on my way. I actually got into the academy on my very first attempt. Now, for those who have done anything in the fireman space, you know how insanely difficult it is to join the fire academy. It is a one in a million chance that you get in. They, they literally take about 800 applicants and they, they try to take, they get about 40 to 80 people that they actually let into the academy. And when you're in the academy, they only looking for about 30 or 40 of you. So half of you won't make it to be a fireman, even if you're lucky enough to get in. And I got in on my very first attempt um, and I was one of those selected and about six weeks into the academy, I tore my leg apart on a, an injury uh, during training. It was it was bad. Um, I was hospitalized for almost nine months on and off. And during that time, I was uh, uh, when I got out, I ended up living in a homeless shelter because I was evicted from my apartment. I, I didn't pay my rent for a long time because it's, you can't pay rent when you're in the hospital. Uh, my car was repossessed. Got uh, every penny I had, every everything I owned. They, they, you know, my I put, my family helped me put all my stuff in a storage unit, and then my storage unit was repossessed because I wasn't making the payments on that. So it was a it was a very very hard time. I was 22 years old, and I went from being a rock star um, to to literally having nothing and being homeless from from one injury. Now I'm the oldest of eight children, so and my father had passed away from from liver failure, so um, I wasn't uh, I was I wasn't in a position to go back to a parent's house or sleep on the couch. Um, being the oldest of eight, the second I was old enough to move out, my spot was taken. <laughs> my room was my bed was taken instantly the day I moved out, so that wasn't an option for me. Uh, so that's a little bit of how I even got into this this homeless space and started to even care about about this space. And now it's it really drives uh, most of the things I do every day. But um, the reason I started one app is because what happened next? I moved into the homeless shelter. Uh, it was the Y uh, W C A homeless shelter, uh, and the first day in the shelter, the director of the shelter, her name was Del Davis. She gave me an award letter after we met that paid rent for one year anywhere I wanted to live. So I went from like doomsday, I, I'm on crutches, which I was on for a year after getting out of the hospital to get an award letter that I can live anywhere. And I was was on cloud nine just to find out that three months later, I'm still in the shelter with an award letter that pays rent anywhere. And it was because I was denied everywhere. And that is not an exaggeration. Um, I applied at least 20 times over, over 90 days. And it was because I, you know, I, when I first got the letter, I remember going on apartments.com and these other websites. And I was like, you know, this, I want this place because I remember my vouchers for $1,200. And I was like, of course, I'm looking for places that's like $1,200 a month. Like I'm using every penny of this voucher. Uh, and then I end up, uh, you know, seeing my top three places and then end up, those getting denied to all of those and borrowing more money, borrow more money for application fees. And, and then eventually uh, having nobody else to borrow from. And it's a longer story than that. But when I tell the story, people always get the wrong impression. They think that the, the most painful time was when I was getting denied all these places. And it, it's actually not. Um, 
uh, the most painful time is when I was sitting in the shelter for a month and a half, not applying anywhere. It's that feeling of being a hundred percent defeated um, and not applying to any uh, properties. One, because you have no money. And then two, because you have no confidence. And literally I, I had an eviction that was months old on my record. I had uh, debt to my previous landlord. I had, I mean, every negative thing that you can have, I had, and that's why, um, you know, I, I didn't, I was so risky on paper to landlord, so they didn't rent to me. Um, and out of nowhere, one day I applied to a property because I happened to see this lady putting the yard sign up in her yard. That was, uh, no exaggeration, it was about five or six blocks from the shelter. So it's been in walking distance this entire time. And I've been applying to places where I had to take a bus ride for an hour and a half out into Vancouver, which if you're not from Oregon, you may not know, but I mean, it's a, a, a far drive from Portland um, because there were rumors that these places approved everybody and to, to be denied. And six blocks away, I see this lady putting, it's probably like a sixplex and she's putting the yard sign up. And I talked to her. She knows all about YWCA. Um, she worked with them before. I apply and uh, she calls me the next day and she says, you're approved. And I was just, I was just approved. And I had been in this shelter for 60 days. Then I had to apply for an extension for another 30 days. And then I'm at the end of that extension before I'm back out on the streets. And my letter is worth nothing because it'll expire. And I get approved. And the place was in walking distance the entire time. I could have. I could have walked six blocks and saw that place. And the only reason I couldn't find it is because it, it was invisible to me. You know, it was, it's hiding in plain sight. Um, I ended up working for the YWCA for about two and a half years. And then I worked with Housing Authority, Teen Insights, and uh, Amazing Grace. So four programs over nine years in housing. And uh, it wasn't, you know, at the Y, we complained all the time because we didn't have enough funding. So we didn't have enough staff to help people. Um, and in reality, I knew that that was a ploy, but that's not the, the problem. You know, we sent people out telling them they had to dress nice and they had to play the part and act the role. And, um, and in reality, it, it's an, it's an automated algorithm. Like these property management companies don't make decisions off of, you know, things like that. They literally have this preset criteria that determines your eligibility to that property. And so um, no matter how many family advocates you hire, once you give a person an award letter, they're really on their own to find a place. And I had this idea for nine years and I, and I, I just never had an opportunity to, to make it come to life. And in Portland, they held this competition. It was called the Startup PDX Challenge. And the way it worked was they said, uh, we want uh, people, and minorities, we want minorities that have solutions to civic problems around housing, around energy, around food, around these five major topics, health, uh, to pitch your idea. And if you are selected, we will fund your prototype and have you work in our incubator. And I'm literally working, you know, at Amazing Grace and I, as a, as a family resource center and women's services, and I, end up pitching, I, I write and I apply for it. And to make another long story short, I win this competition. Uh, I win the entire competition and they fund my concept. And my concept was, I believed that I could house any person in a single day if I was able to build a platform that showed renters exactly where they qualified. Uh, at the YMCA, or YWCA, we had um, 50% of our vouchers, our letters expired. That means every other person that we pay rent, we told we will pay their rent for a year, their letter expired. We kicked them back out of the shelter into their car on the street, uh, because they never were able to connect. And we blamed on the, the fact, like we said, we'd had no money, but in reality, we also had, um, you, I worked at, um, housing authority. There's no deeper pockets in the industry than HUD. And we had a 40% failure rate. Uh, our vast vouchers had a 50% failure rate for homeless vets for them getting connected to the property. So it, it didn't matter if we had a lot of money or a little money, the market problem was the same. So the outcome was the same. 
And uh, my product, I said, I want to go out and collect the unique screening criteria of every single management company in the state of Oregon. And if I can, if I can go collect them all, I want to put them all into this one website and I will pull the renter's background check and screen it against all the unique screening companies in, um, uh, in Oregon. And I would literally be able to tell the renters instantly where they qualified. And, uh, that's the competition I won. They funded the prototype and I built it. And it was called noatfeed.com. We have a screen of it here, what the website actually looked like. And it was, um, it's a, the most amazing platform. This is literally a screenshot of the outcome of a renter's background check. The red pins, so all of the pins are places where you are rental properties that are currently vacant. Um, the green pins are places that you are approved for. The um, red pins are places that you're denied to. And uh, the yellow pins are places that you're conditionally approved for. And if they have a lightning bolt, then that means that you can actually apply right through the platform with no application fee, which is why we had the name one app or no app fee. Um, and you could apply directly to that property and be approved for free. So this is the this website that took a year to develop. Uh, and I walked around and collected the criteria, screening criteria of there's 389 management companies in Oregon, and I had 309 on this platform, okay? Uh, it had up to 4,000 vacancies at, in, at any point, and pulling your background check on one app was literally the equivalent of spending $200,000 in application fees and going around and applying to properties for 11 years, done in a minute from your phone. Uh, we won, the platform won every award that you can imagine. It was it was 40 under 40. Uh, we, I, I won, uh, we were the fifth most promising tech startup in the world. Uh, and Y Combinator 1776 and, and this other com revolution, they come together and host a 3,000 startups event every year from all the countries. Uh, we ranked five of 3,000. Um, it was, it was an amazing, I was able to give a TED talk on this, uh, product. And, uh, so, at the end of the day, we were pulling, we had about, um, we were pulling about 40,000 background checks a year and showing renters where they qualified. And the outcome of, so if you were to watch my TED Talk, what you've seen right now is is what's in the TED Talk, except it's a, it's a much more in-depth version of it. Uh, what you don't get to see is what happens next. So now that the platform is in the market, we're pulling thousands of thousands of background checks for free per month, showing renters everywhere they qualify. And there's a scorecard system that shows renters exactly what the problem is if they don't qualify. Uh, you end up, what happens next is something that I would have never imagined in a million years. Uh, how do you think people applied in a market where they got to see everything that they qualify for? What do you think their behavior would have been? I always imagined that people who got to see everywhere they qualify would apply to approved properties. Why would I ever apply to a place that I'm, I'm, I'm showing you that you're denied to? Uh, unbelievably, the outcome on one app was almost identical to what happens in real life. We have the next slide that it, it'll show, you know, renter's behavior. Uh, in the regular rental market, it's about 20% approval rate, 50% denial or con conditionally approved, and about 30% denied. Uh, on one app, 33% of people apply to deny properties that they saw was denied. 57% uh, applied to conditionally approved properties, and only 10% of people applied to approved properties. It was actually slightly worse than what screening companies showed as data that happens in markets where you are, uh, where you don't have any idea what the outcome is if you apply. And so for a second, I thought thousands of Americans were colorblind and they couldn't actually see the difference between a red, yellow, and green pin. Uh, but we had to host, uh, we used the SEI and we hosted a, a, um, uh, uh, like a survey where we had hundreds of people come in. We had about 200 people show up over two weekends and we helped them find housing in person. And we watched them use one app platform to understand what was going on. 
And the reason for these applications happening this way was for two major reasons. Um, one, people had a sense of community and it was very important to them. And what that means is that even though one app will show you that maybe that out of 4,000 vacancies, you qualify for 76 and here they are. Just because we show you that if you wanted to live in Beaverton, because that's where your church is, that's where your kid's school is, your job is, um, it doesn't matter if I tell you that there's 30 vacancies in Gresham, because you it doesn't it doesn't matter to you if there's green pins in Gresham. It doesn't matter if there's um, green pins in Portland or Vancouver. Beaverton is where you want to live, and that is where your community is. And so we, I would watch people on the website only focus on one area, even though there's green pins everywhere. And I had to realize that I built this website from a position that most people are in. I was homeless in a homeless shelter. So I literally would have lived anywhere. I had no community left, I had no, no nothing. And so yes, for me, knowing what my opportunities were, I would have picked from the best green pen but that's not every person most people they have options and people who are paying 50 percent of their income they want to live where they want to live uh and community is actually extremely valuable for for people uh i would give you an example we had a, a lady um that was named shawnee smith and i will never forget her she said across um, for me and she said, I have two days left before my Section A voucher expires. And I was like, you came to the perfect place. I'm gonna create a one app account with you and we're gonna show you everywhere you qualify. And she said, I already have a one app account. And I was like, uh, I was like, okay, well then you should, you know, maybe there was a bug or something that didn't work. And we log into her account and I see green pins all over the place. And I'm like, okay, what's what's the issue here? And she's like looking, she's like, well, and she goes right to an area um, and literally doesn't care about any of the other pans. She just needed to live in Beaverton. And we're going through um, properties there. And I kept trying to get her to go to other areas. And she couldn't really articulate why it was so important for her to stay in Beaverton. But after talking to her, she didn't own her own car. So she shared a car. Her kids, she worked during the time where her kids had to be, um, they got out of school and her her mother actually met her kids at her house and were and basically was there for about an hour, hour and a half until she got home from work and then went back home, which was only a block or so away. Um, uh, her, a person in her apartment building, uh, she did their kids hair for them. Uh, and there was just, she had this community that that literally was so strong, it made up for more money than her actual employment. And we, as a team, went back and, and literally broke down what it would have cost for her to, to do these things without her community. And it literally equated to more money than her job paid. So community is, is actual wealth. Um, and we never, we never looked at it like that. Basically, if we were to take Shani from her place in Beaverton and her community and move her all the way to Gresham, which is like, 45, 50 minutes away, she would have the same income with the same rent, but be experiencing poverty on a level that she was nothing near um, during the time that she was in her place in Beaverton. She would now have to depend on money for everything that her community supplied her with. So she would have to pay a car payment with insurance that she did not have to do now. She would have to pay for childcare that she didn't have to do now. She would have, her kids would have nappy hair and she would look poor because these were things that her community made up for. And then I learned, I can't take a person from, from over here and just move them across town because it's, because they're approved. Like that doesn't work. Um, it's not best for them. Like that's just reality. What another thing is she said, it was, it was a day that we did this event on a day where it was the big uh, Mayweather fight. Now this is a 200 to $250 pay-per-view fight, okay? And she said, how long is this going to take because I need to get home after this uh, to watch the fight? And I was thinking to myself, 
man, I can't afford that fight. That thing is like 250 bucks. I don't know. I was like, you really, you, you bought that fight? And she's like, no, I'm going to uh, a friend's house where it's $5 in a bottle. <laughs> I will never forget that. And I was like, $5 in a bottle and you can watch the fight. You have to just bring a bottle and it don't even have to be full. Just grab them from the house. And what's funny is that that's community. Like that is the definition of community right there. You can experience things that you could never afford outside of it. So I learned that we have to keep people in their community. It can't be about moving them where the pins are green, right? The second thing was um, people really care about their property. Like if you're spending 50% of your money, what that place looks like matters. And I had another renter um, that was an extreme case of that, that I helped during that event. And she, we were going through properties that she was approved for the green pins and none of them were what she wanted. And it was, she was looking for a three bedroom. And the first one was like 800 square feet. And she was like, absolutely not. And she was skipping these, these properties, like without even paying much attention to them. It was like the, the home photo of the outside was enough for her to be like, nope, nope, nope. And then we found one where the outside had great curb appeal. It was big enough. And I remember being like, what's wrong with this one? And she's like, I don't remember, but I've looked at this one before. And so then we started to scroll through the photos and she was like, oh, that's right. And I'm like, what? This one looks perfect. And she said, these bedrooms are blue. And I was like, okay. And she was like, I have two daughters. I'm not moving my my girls into little boy bedrooms. And that was enough. Like that was enough for her to say, this property doesn't work. And I've told this, I've spoke publicly and, and shared that scenario with people. And people were like, well, then she's, she's too picky. You know, that, and, and I, that's literally what people, if you think that right now, then you are coming from a place of privilege. That's like a person being hungry and you offering them a steak and them saying, oh, I don't eat meat. I'm a vegetarian. And then you being like, well, you ain't hungry then. Cause if you was hungry, you would eat this steak. No, th that's not how it works. I can, I can, if I'm gonna spend half my money every month, I, I have the right to care about what that property looks like. I have the right to fall in love with the place that I'm gonna be living at. And if I don't feel that passion and excitement for it, um, you know, it's not, then I have the right to say, this isn't the one for me. Uh, and so once you understood that, we, we realized that even with one app, building a $4 million platform that literally screens a, a renter against thousands of vacancies simultaneously and giving them the results, um, was not the solution access to housing. Uh, the, the truth is people don't apply to where they qualify. They apply to where they wanna live, period. Like there's no change in human behavior with that. So we went back to the drawing board and we said, how do we fix access to housing? And so we added a new product to OneApp and it's called the OneApp Guarantee. Uh, what our data showed uh, which was which was really awesome. Is it, it shows every reason why a person is denied in detail, and we found that seventy one percent of all of the denials that took place in two thousand and nineteen would have been approved if they had a guarantee. I mean, you can you can see the screen. That's the reason why every renter is denied eviction uh, from criminal, and the largest is is rental history, which believe it or not. Uh, landlords do a really poor job sometimes communicating with other landlords. And that's the, the biggest reason for an adverse. Uh, yellow is conditional, red is denied, um, but they're all adverse outcomes to an application and rental history is the biggest. But 71% um, of all of the people who were denied um, in Oregon, up 20,000 people would have been approved they had a cosigner. It's like the silver bullet to access to housing. If you don't make enough money, uh, co-signer. If you don't, if you're, if you don't have a long enough rental history, co-signer. Credit's not quite there, co-signer. I mean, it literally overcomes every barrier outside of criminal history. And yet less than 2% of people apply with a co-signer, which is a tool so powerful that it can literally get you approved to almost anywhere. Um, and it's because co-signers are very hard to come by. And we found that loophole and we launched one app guarantee. 
Uh, we now, uh, it's two years old. We have 52 companies uh, that participate. Oh no, that was when I wrote the last deck. I think we're over 70 or so companies now that, um, that take the guarantee. Uh, and it is a, we are the financial co-signers for these renters. And it has worked amazingly with the one app platform. So not only if you're denied, it will tell you that, hey, this property takes the guarantee. You can be approved. We get uh, about 1,200 applications per month. And uh, we approve people to move in with the guarantee every day. And we are working with uh, other companies and agencies to help um, one app spread to other states, as well as the guarantee to help people live where they where they want to live. Um, the guarantee, like the co-signer, covers the landlord's risk. So um, there's no reason why they wouldn't approve them. And uh, with some new partnerships, we've improved the guarantee to the point to where uh, starting uh, the 15th of next month, the guarantee is you can actually select pay later as an option. So you can move in um, and not in and just pay the guarantee within six months with zero interest, uh, which is so excited for that to launch because uh, it'll make access to housing even more amazing the second that goes live. So um, that's what we've been working on on one app. We've struggled and fought to figure out how to make access to housing more available for renters. And uh, that's what we've come up with so far. Uh, we have lots of other project products in the pipelines and solutions, but like we said, the guarantee was by far the biggest uh, tool we could develop. Um, and um, that's the work we do here at One App. Thank you so much and good luck with all the other amazing speakers that you guys have coming up next.